Welcome to the channel, folks. Plunkers and classics. And kitties and a puppy. <laughs> okay, we are continuing continuing along with uh, the restoration of this 68 Chevelle Nomad wagon. And I don't know, some guy told some guy commented that that's not a restoration. So I don't know what you want to call it. Customization, rest, it's, it's being restored from sitting in a field for 30 something years back on the road. So I don't know what else you want me to call it. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> last episode, we got all this firewall, AC, heater, blower motor, all that stuff taken apart, cleaned up put back on painted the firewall painted most of the frame a little bit more has to be painted when I take the suspension apart okay and since then I've uh, well then I painted the wheel wells last episode <clears throat> got them painted over and under okay so I've started painting and that's painting with pour 15 the radiator support here but I still need to do the back side and weld up weld something in this little area here uh, this hole here is for the AC uh, free online going through to the condenser and that one almost looks like one but it's not so we're gonna weld something in there uh, I painted the little brackets side brackets the middle bracket goes below the hood latch little windshield washer thing and then paint it underneath underneath the header panel remember this is all rust no holes just all rusty scuffed it down pour 15 it okay so we got most of it done uh let's have to do the back of the fenders we're gonna uh i might do that this video um, we may make some patch panels here and roughly weld them in. I don't want to bondo and smooth it all out perfect until it's actually on the car. But we can weld in a piece of metal on both sides. Oh, I, I got one other fender over there. We may use that. Uh, and all under here, we're going to pour 15 all that underneath and that's the other make a patch there like i said the brace here is good if you're up north these usually rot out but that's good but when we cut out the patch on the other side we'll put some pour 15 on the inside of this keep it from rusting uh and we get a cover it real good because we got drain holes here you got drain holes for the sunroof and drain holes here for whatever collects in this area. So the bottom, the back of that fender is going to be really, can't have no open metal or rust or anything showing or else it'll rot out pretty quick. I forgot to, I did cut that off but it wasn't long enough. I still got to cut that off. Okay, um... Okay, update on the front end parts here. Uh, this was from Tom's Tom Auto Parts on eBay. And, you know, I don't know. They could be a good company. I don't know. But this is the box they sent me. I ordered the four A-frames, control arms, whatever you, want, whatever you want to call them. And only two upper ones came in the box box don't look like it, it's big enough to fit all four but it could be it could possibly be but that's the way it came this is all beat to hell after a few emails back and forth they just refunded my money didn't say anything about sending this back so I got my money back so I ordered through eBay uh, pirate jack they might be Pirate Jacks at Asheville 
Pirate Jacks, Asheville, North Carolina, or NC, or something like that. But he sells tons and tons of uh, disc brake conversion kits and A-frames and everything. So I bought the whole kit, all in one. Instead of, you know, A-frames from one place, brake, disc brakes from another, and all that stuff. Just ordered everything from him, all one kit. Uh, I think it was 1100 bucks with uh, tax probably the highest highest priced item I've ever single item I've ever bought all at once okay that's paid for I don't know when it's gonna get here three four five six days probably not not time enough for this video definitely next video we'll get it in and take this whole front suspension apart because uh, we already got all the uh, got the coil shocks tie rods center link sidle arm all that stuff and we got all that so his pirate jacks disc brakes kit is for normal height a lot of them were for you know two inch drop and all that stuff and I, I didn't want any of that okay and it's supposed to be all GM replacement stuff so if you need a caliper get it from gm or a, a gm part number so you can go to AutoZone and uh like the master cylinders a corvette one so anyway it comes with all the the disc brake conversion for just the front we're not doing the back uh and the a-frames <clears throat> so it's got all the a-frames and it said something about replacement moog ball joints I've heard that's what you do so I, I didn't quite understand why they put that whether they did put the Moog ones in or they just put the part numbers there in case you wanted to order Moog ones and put them in there we'll find out when it comes okay so we got upper and lower A-frames on both sides with the ball joints bushings everything on there even has the bottom uh, it comes with all this sway bar uh, sway bar ends and all that okay uh then it comes with all the the backing plate dust shield then of course the rotor caliper all new uh bearings uh you name it uh it comes with the hard these hard brake or the, the soft brake lines and it comes with all the all the little uh washers and and all that stuff so it comes with everything but the hard lines uh, has a Corvette master cylinder um, an 11 inch power brake booster I think they said the master cylinder was a or the 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 booster is a Delco Delco and then the master cylinder is supposed to be a replacement Corvette or something uh, so we'll see if it fits. They actually had a something about a nine inch smaller booster So I don't know if the 11 inch is too big in a nine inch, but uh, So everything so I'll have to figure out oh and then the proportioning valve which mounts mounts here, so I Don't know guys. I might have to buy a kit uh, for flaring and make my own brake lines. I know it's not that hard just that I don't have any of this stuff uh, Yeah, I'd hate to reuse all this old stuff, but Anyway, that'll be the last thing we'll, we'll get everything on there and decide whether I want to make new brake lines if I do It'll be all the way back make all new brake lines to the back Okay, so that will be coming up most likely next video. It won't be in time for this one now what I'm hoping is going to be here real quick, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, hopefully, is the uh, the belt moldings for the uh, for the doors um, and the door panels. They go. Been waiting. I don't know. Six weeks, seven weeks. They mount on here. Okay, so you got to put them on there before we mount the door panel. Now we'll mount the door panel 
and then we mount the speaker and uh, door handles and armrests, these things and everything. But I think what we're going to start on is uh, running the speaker wire and drilling holes for that. It's a little bit tight. I'm going to go ahead and put the carpet in the back seat in. Probably put some of that insulation I showed you last video underneath here. So we got to drill some holes for the speaker wire. Probably go, you know, you want to drill in double steel or anything like that. So we got to find a nice little spot. It's not going to interfere with the window going down. And uh, probably right in, probably right in here somewhere. Drill a hole in there. And then we'll drill a hole probably in here. I'll have to take this back up, but it's only held by two screws. And then run uh, speaker wire from here through here. Then we're going to go down and probably just tape it to the floor and put the carpet over top of it. Probably just run it. Could probably run it right along here underneath the uh, sill plates. Got to run it down and then have it just come up and hang down like this. This is for the uh, for the sunroof. Then we're gonna uh, make a make a junction box, little fuse box in here at some point. Probably maybe underneath here somewhere. Maybe on the kick panel over here. I don't know. I don't know yet. Okay, so the speaker wires, we'll run them up here and we'll have them probably go underneath here or something. We'll run the, uh, and also we got this speaker here for the front, I believe. Is that double? Same thing. We got to find, uh, well, this one would be a little bit better because the window, the window frame thing is right here. So nothing over here is going to be interfered with. So we can probably do it up here in the middle. Drill a hole right, yeah, you know, that single, single plate there. So run it through there. Oh, you know what? I already. <laughs> this is for the uh, the old power antenna, and I already put some sealer in there. I could pop that open and run the speaker wire through there, or drill, drill another hole. There ain't going to be a hole like that on the other side. But we got the uh, built-in antenna on this one, so did away with the fender-mounted one. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we'll run it through here, through here. And then run the speakers and zip tie it up here somewhere. Stereo is probably going to be in the middle here on a probably a custom-made console. I'm not sure yet underneath here. So we'll run it, you know, a foot longer than it needs to be and mark them all uh, front, the uh, front right and uh, rear right. So we'll have the wires and we'll just tie them up like this and then we'll do the left side. Um, I did buy all these little wire connectors because some of them speakers, you know, they got the little... Some of them got big. These things weren't very much off of eBay. Um, you know, some of them are going to be little ones. Like, this is supposed to be every size, but... Uh, hopefully they are. I know what those are. See, two of them are going to be like that, and then two of them are going to be smaller. Anyway, we'll figure that out. I do have a, I bought a big roll of wire. No, it wasn't a roll, it was a big bag of wire, 50 feet or something like that. I'll have to dig them out. Uh, let me see. I believe no nope. it's in a bag like that anyway I'll find that 
and show you. I bought that off eBay too. It was a lot cheaper than Walmart, I believe. Well, I should have had it handy, but... And it's red and black. So it's marked red and black. Black for negative. So we're going to run them wires. We're going to crimp these on there. Uh, they should be all right crimping them on. And these, this set here I bought. Um, these are different sizes with solder in them. And you heat them up with a heat gun. And it melts the solder. I mainly bought this set here to try it out on uh, when I do the LS swap. It's going to be a lot of uh, wiring that I got to do. But we may try a couple of these on the speaker wires. But... I don't think you can really get the solder unless you do it the old-fashioned way. Get the solder in inside these ends here. But they should be all right just sticking the wire in and crimping them real good. And then we'll tape it up for maybe try some of this heat shrink. Cut this in half and put it on there. It's got to be waterproof. And we're probably going to... Uh, I got a couple of big sheets of uh, plastic. Uh... I got a big roll of it over there, but like plastic, and we're probably going to put that in behind the speakers, just so in case water gets in, in the door, it doesn't rot the speakers. But we can't put the speakers in until after the door panels. We're gonna concentrate on getting it, getting it wired first. So that'll be first thing I'm gonna do. Start on that right now, start drilling some holes and getting all that wires run and uh so i will be back when i get that done and show you so that that way when the door the belt moldings get here we can put them on and be done with it okay so i'll be back um i will put a picture of what the kit a screenshot of the kit that i just bought from eBay and show you a picture of it with the seller's name in case you want to uh, see what the kit looks like. Um, just go to his eBay name or use that heading that's going to be in the picture and put that in search on eBay and it'll come up. He, he sells kits for all kinds of cars. In case you want to click through the pictures, go through the auction description and read all the stuff about what it you know has and doesn't have so i'll put them pictures in right after this and then i'll, I'll be back for another segment okay guys this is the big roll of uh speaker wire i bought i i can't remember the thickness of it but it's pretty pretty thick but with these speakers here this little These two little things came with it. So, see what I mean? One's bigger than the other. And they mount right on there. So, and I knew they were going to be short. But, since it's for the front, it'll be just long enough to run through here and up here to the middle. So I think we're going to use these even though they're thinner, but they will work. Okay, so I drilled a hole through there. I'll show you on the other side. Okay, we'll use, we're going to use the hole for the antenna, the old antenna, and then that hole. And I got some... Uh, some uh, some of this hose um, and it will fit in it'll fit in here I'm gonna run that through there and then I'm gonna run this hose in like that instead of using a bunch of tape and everything and then we'll put some silicone on the front and the back of this silicone them in real good to make sure it's 
Yeah, it doesn't. It barely moves. So we're going to run the wire through there. And that should be good. So it shouldn't break or wear out or nothing. Okay, so I'm going to do the two front doors. And then uh, we'll do the two back doors. So I'll be back. Okay, guys. I got the other spare core support that I had. Um, as you can see, this one here is just smashed on this side here. A um, bunch of differences. This is supposed to be out of 69. Got a different uh, hood release. This goes down near the bumper. And this condent or, uh, dryer or whatever is here. Condenser is a little bit different. Got a connection over here. And one up here. And they look like hard lines instead of what this one had, uh, which was this dryer on here with two two rubber lines, and then this mounted inside the fender well. So I don't know. We swap it over to a '69 or leave it at '68. I don't know. Um. This side here, I've been dollying it out, but it's been it's been bent up and in, and I dollied it out, but I can't get it perfect. It's too thick. This metal is really, really thick. I guess if you if I had some torches, I could probably get it a little bit better. But um, you can see how this is tilted down this way it's supposed to be flat and it's supposed to be straight across like this so I'm thinking about cutting cutting something like this cut that off and weld it on here because it's it's mainly bent right in here it's warped this this is warped up I mean I could bang around these just so the headlights fit it's where the headlight mounting things mount. As long as those are flat uh, or pretty close, I can adjust it. But still, I want the uh, fender well and everything to line up good. So I don't know. I just may cut that, cut that across and weld in that little piece. Just to, I got to do some cutting and welding and weld up this hole here. Okay, so I got that. Uh, the other two fenders aren't much better than these two. The bottoms aren't rotted out, but they got some rust bubbles. So basically, they're going to have to be cut out and patched anyway. So I think uh, that's just what I'll do with these two fenders. I started scuffing down the uh, surface rust. Um, yeah, they're not the greatest fenders, but and they've been dented in and filled in like right here you can see it's you, know, you can see it but it's been dented in there's some bondo on the other side that's gonna all have to be reworked okay this core support did have a filler panel on it so this is the old one here this where it was wrecked on the passenger side and they had that welded to the fender uh, this is the one off the 69 it's it's bent but it's bent up here and as you can see this is oh the uh so this hood release opens right from underneath the grill as that one is underneath the bumper well at the very bottom of the bumper so this has a 69 has a spot right here for that latch reach out latch and the 68 doesn't Not a big deal uh, I'm not exactly sure what these are for I'd have to line it up to see what mounts there um, But the 68 doesn't have them doesn't have the two holes for them and instead they got This little deal here there's just one and then this is the 69 has the 
these two little things, I'm not sure what mounted there. I think maybe the grill, different grill or something. So anyway, I don't know if I should, uh, the knees, I think this one's okay, but this one here is all bent up. So I'm not sure if I'm going to dolly this out the best I can or just buy a new one for a hundred bucks. So anyway, I got this situation going. The core support. I'm trying to get the, those two things done. And then the fenders. Doing that. All the uh, brake parts and everything's supposed to be in tomorrow. So I don't know whether I'll get to this or just drop it. Go ahead and go with the do the brakes and suspension. Leave that to later. Uh, oh, I have been doing the uh, speakers. No word on when the uh, belt molding is supposed to be here, so I can put on the door panels. Okay, this one I run. I don't know if I mentioned I I use this plastic stuff here instead of the hose, so I run that in there, run it through here. So that's for the front and then the back uh, the back I run it like this and just use some tape then that wire kit I had didn't have the little I found these later on I, I didn't think I had any for the back so it has a big one and a little one. My little wire connector set doesn't have these little ones. So I, I test fitted it and it, it'll fit on one end of this. So I, I put those two on there. But I'm thinking I might cut this, uh, cut this off and splice it into that. Um, I did that. These up. So I use my little solder connector connectors with the heat gun. It worked pretty good. Um, yeah, right here. This the little wire that was going to fit over here uh, busted in half. I was trying to fish it through a. a thing there and it just ripped in half so I used the two ends and then I put them little solder connectors there to uh, some of the big wire and uh, heated it up and I, it seems pretty strong so it basically got a little solder connection in the middle it's supposed to melt and solder the two wires together and then the heat shrink on the ends to keep it waterproof so I may do that since I found these other two for the for the rear speakers okay so I'm, just, I'm messing with that too so these speakers will be all ready to put in okay that's what i've been up to kind of boring but uh just figured i'd let y'all know and i just got this door here to go okay so i'll be back okay guys i'm going to show you how this uh these little solder connection uh, things work and see in here there's a little bit of solder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these ends for the speaker on these ends of the wire so this is the red one here so you just use your uh, wire cutters these wire uh, snipper things there, put it in the right hole. And you can see I put it past the uh, solder connection there right in the middle. And then use the other end. Right like that. So it goes past there too. Don't burn your fingers, so kind of hold it up. Kind of hold it up like that. See the heat gun? Or not very much. Heat the solder up first, and you'll see it.
Okay, now how good you can see that. But when you heat it up, you can see the solder go to both ends. And then you heat up these, this little spot here and there. And it's a heat shrink and it tightens it up. That's what the, the little red things are there. You heat them up and it seals it up. still pretty hot. I don't want to pull it, but you can tell it's just soldered in there, so it's not going to uh, it's not going to come apart. Check it when it's cold. Okay, so we can do this one here. Oh, that was a little bit. That's in there. I'm going to find my Okay, I'll do this one. Okay, that's it. This one here will be dry. See, they're real strong. Um, so yeah, I'll be using that. I showed you, I hope I showed you the box of the new connections. Uh, these things that I bought, they're all different sizes. If they're not on this video, they're on the other video. All the new stuff that I bought. I'll be using all these on the uh, LS engine swap. I think that's way better than uh, old fashioned soldering and uh, you know, this is, it's solder and heat shrink all in one. And there's waterproof, better than old electrical tape and trying to get a solder gun that takes 10 times as long. Okay, so that's it for uh, the connections. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna run it through the jam here. Just like the other side I showed you. Uh, I don't know if I showed you, I'd run the tape run it out of here tape it all along here run it up towards where the stereo is going to be and then uh we'll wait for the uh be ready for the stereo whenever i get that console built and all that okay um i cut the end off on this this thing here it was just too too bent up to uh dolly out perfectly so I got this piece here, and uh, I was going to butt, uh, butt weld that up on there like that here in a little bit, and then paint it all black. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, guys. I got this section welded on there, and then this little patch right here. Uh... I ground it down a little bit, but I'm not going to finish it out with Bondo or nothing like that, so. That's it there. That's good enough. Saved ourselves uh, 300 bucks. I sanded it a little bit more and uh, pour 15 it. But I'll probably wait till I get the uh, fenders, fenders here, all the inside of them scuffed up and do it all at once. If I can get the cats out of the way. What are you kitties doing anyway? It's supposed to be catching mice. Okay, so anyway, uh, I'll be back. Okay, guys. Here's all the... Uh, front end parts 
Let me just uh, get that out of the way. Okay, I come in uh, five boxes. And this is for the uh, control arms, A frames, and the brake. All one kit from the same place. So we're going to open her up, make sure they're not damaged. This box here is a little broke open, but. Okay. Yeah, there was nothing. Okay, this probably is the uh, master cylinder and the uh, proportioning valve. Yep, there's a supposed to be Corvette style. Cylinder. I don't know why it's got, got four lines. Anyway, let's figure that out. Little bleeder deal. And this should be the uh, power brake booster, I would imagine. does have some uh, rods to it too. I was hoping it'd have something to... Okay. That's that. to guess I'd say this is the rotors Okay, they said something about Moog replacement, but I didn't know whether, and they give some part numbers, so I didn't know whether they actually come with Moog replacement ball joints, or they just give the numbers out in case you wanted to buy them to replace them. Because I heard that's what everybody's supposed to do, everybody does, is replace these with Moog ones. Uh, I don't see any writing on there. Okay. Anyway, that's the upper. This is probably the lower here.
Okay. And that's a lower, and it's got the little sway bar end to them. Let's see if that is a. Uh... And it comes with the uh, little coil insulators, little rubber stoppers. Ball joints here. I don't know. Oh, they're pressed in there. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to read up on s some more of that. The bottom like this, I wouldn't have to press these in or, any or anything. But then I heard should replace them with Moog ones. So anyway, that's the uh, brake stuff and control arms. We should have all the rotors. I guess what each package should be. Okay, there's a little uh, dust shields type stuff. Right here. These are all the bearings for this uh, rotor spindle. Those should be probably the brackets to hold the calipers. see a box big enough to hold the well calipers probably in that box then I guess okay yes yeah, that's the two spindles there so we need two spindles we need the two uh, rotors and the two calipers brake pads okay these are supposed to be GM so you can get easy easy replacements at uh, auto parts stores Okay. And these should be the rotors. and the, uh, the soft brake lines. That's one, and the other one should be right below it, there. Okay. Okay, I think that's everything. I don't think anything's missing from what I can tell. Okay, I was hoping those uh, belt moldings would come so I could put the door panels on, but they're not here. They said between August 3rd and 9th, tomorrow's the 9th. 
So I'll give them till tomorrow, then I'll have to email them and say what's up. But I was reading some of the feedback, and a couple of people had to wait two weeks longer than they said. So hell, it could be another couple of weeks. But I'm hoping it was going to be here, and we could install them door panels, put the belt moldings on them, and then install them, and then be done with the inside. And then save all this stuff here for next video. And like I showed you before in another video, I got all the front uh, tie rods and idler arm and coils and shocks and all that stuff. So we'll just tear, tear this down and put on all that stuff in one video. Might not get it everything working because I'm probably going to need... Um, the hard brake lines. I'm not sure, but well, I probably will be because that other master cylinder's got lines here. But I'll figure it out. And then, of course, this uh, proportioning valves down here, whereas the other one I think mounts up, mounts up there on the master cylinder. So, anyways, hoping to get like 90% of it done except for bleeding the brakes and see if I can order hard brake lines or I'll just have to order a bunch of bunch of uh, tube and some benders and some flaring tools and do all that. So anyway, let me, uh, I don't know if I showed you tonight. I finished up the radiator support here. That's all painted. And... Uh, I didn't have enough to do all the fenders. I didn't want to do them all anyway. I wanna, I just used up the little can to cover most of it. And then I'm going to cut out. Yeah, these are, uh, most of them, shit, they were up, they were from 65 bucks to a hundred and something dollars each for this little section. And there's only one place on eBay that has them for 47 something. Uh, but that's still a hundred bucks for both. So uh, I'm just going to cut these out and make, make them out of some chunk metal. Uh, but yeah, I have to cut that out and then, uh, put some pour 15 on the other side of this brace before I put the new one on and then paint it all, coat it up real good because we got the drain. We got the drain here and, and down here. So... All that water draining down. That's I want that real, real good shape. So there's no, so it won't start rusting. So I think maybe we'll do that before I start on the front end, and then end this video with that, and then start a new video with uh, doing all the front end stuff. But anyway, I'll wait till tomorrow uh, to see if that belt molding shows up. I'd really like to get all the door panels and speakers put on and done with. But anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys. I cut a patch out of this old uh, Ford Taurus hood here. And this is the old piece in the bottom of the fender. And I uh, made this piece here just with some hammer and dollies on my trailer. I'll go and uh, show you on the fender. Okay, this is what was left of it. Like, like that. So I kind of use that as a template. And uh, I forgot to make a little flange on this end. I was going to make just a little one, but uh, it'll be all right. I think what I'll do is I'll just uh, grind all this out and just weld it to that. And just build it up a little bit but anyway basically gonna go like that I have to got a little trim more trimming to do right in here and use some clamps and bend that there and then uh, this is one hole for the bolt and then this is the other one here and uh, once I get that on there I'll uh, make that hole Okay, and they bolt 
me bolt right up to these two holes here. That's all that holds the bottom of the fender on. But I'll just weld it on there and get it close. I'm not going to do no Bondo work until the fenders are actually mounted back on here. So we can get, get these, you know, real nice body lines in there. We have to do a little bit more cutting and everything. So I don't want to be banging around and busting the Bondo and everything. So anyway, I'm going to get, I'm going to get that welded on there and, uh, And that's a little tab there have to weld in weld in these here make it flush okay so i'll be back okay guys i got this patch welded in and it's supposed to be like this it's supposed to be low here and goes up and it's welded onto here there's actually supposed to be a little brace here so you can see on this one it goes low and then goes up and there's a little brace thing there and it actually is indented see this where their bolt goes on there it's indented a little bit so I got it I got this on the other new one and then this one here I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work to get it indented lower but uh anyway that's it there. Save 50 bucks there. We'll save 50 bucks on the other one. So that's a hundred dollars we saved. 300 saved on the instead of buying a core support. Uh, we'll do this other fender later because uh, I'm ready to start on putting all them front end parts on there. Those belt moldings, inner and outer never showed up. I'm gonna have to email them and. Ask him what's up with that. I'm sure there might be a big delay. Um, I did get a couple things in. I want to thank uh, Brandon. He uh, said to go to my local O'Reilly's and he'll have a, a surprise for me. So I went there and uh, that's what the guy gave me. And the guy there at the counter said he watches my channel too. So hi to him. Thanks to Brandon uh, for that. Um, that's just regular primer surfacer, but yeah, I can use it. Um, I like to use the two-part epoxy on the outside before I paint. But yeah, that'll be good for painting like underneath. Probably in behind these fenders here. Prime all them patches on the back and everything. And yeah, I'll put it to use. Also got into uh, sway bar bushings. These are the bushings right here. And there's... Uh, they go on there like this and there's actually three sizes of these guys I got the smallest <laughs> um, 15 sixteenths then one inch and one and an eighth I believe so this is the 15 sixteenths but anyway I got them I think I got everything for this front end so we'll start on that next video and hopefully I should be able to get it all done maybe not working like I said about the, the brake lines and fluid but I should get everything mounted on there okay so stay tuned for that we'll start fresh and get it all done okay uh, thanks for all the comments about Mortsky's repair and his nomad that he got yeah it's i uh, i was trying to decide which was rougher his or mine when i first bought it but i think his is he's got a quarter panel that's just beat to hell it's missing some side glass so where to find a quarter and a glass for that thing uh and then his was a nomad custom uh and it had the uh, storage thing in the back and I don't know it might have had another couple other little options had the same engine and transmission this one would have had 307 automatic uh, well I don't know if this was a would have been a power glide or a three-speed but same 307 got the same emblems on it 
But yeah, he wants 2250 for it, and he's in Podunk, North Dakota, he said. <laughs> Uh, up near the Canadian border, I'm not wouldn't go all the way over there, and and I don't need it. You know, I I don't need any more parts. Parts I needed mostly were needed to be new, and uh, really just a couple of little things now, like that Nomad emblem. But he's not going to sell just a Nomad emblem off that. He wants to sell the whole thing. But yeah, if anybody's interested and haven't haven't watched Mortskis there, if you. <laughs> If you want a project like this, he's got one, but it's rough. It needs all the floors and just like this one. And if you're, and I don't know how many comments were there that were saying, hey, Clunkers and Classics uh, was building one of them. Mortsky just choked around and said, yeah, I read the 74 comments. So I don't know if there were 74 of you guys over there, but anyway, if you're from Mortsky's and seen those comments, welcome aboard. If you actually want to see one of these, being built from in the shape Mortsky's was uh, like I said this one I'm not sure if it was worse or not it needed this one I put in all new floors and everything from start to finish to the I still haven't uh, it's gonna be like the most recognizable car on YouTube to uh, the most reliable I don't know yet it's a little combination of everything but it's it's gonna be the flagship car of this uh, channel and it's going to be traveling the USA that's why I'm spending a lot more money on this car than I would a normal car or one I don't sell them but if I did fix one up to sell I certainly wouldn't put all this new stuff on there so that's why I'm putting all that new stuff there so it lasts a long time hopefully you know you don't know cheap Chinese stuff you don't know if it's going to last or what but I'll give it a try so uh yeah if any of you interested he's got that one for sale i'm uh i'm not interested in it but it was neat to see one you don't see them very often like i said years ago they were all sent to the crusher used for demolition derbies or just used for parts cars and just junked and crushed because nobody nobody liked them but now you know they're kind of coming around and there were some money fixed up or else I wouldn't be fixing this one up. It has to be worth way more than I put into it uh, for me to work on, restore one. But I like it anyway. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to go over. Um, yeah. St um, we'll be doing the front end, hopefully in one video, maybe two. Um, and then... I think we're going to start on the LS. Now it's going to take a while doing the LS, guys. I won't get, I won't go into too much, but I'm going to do it one step at a time. So I'm not, I'm not going to have a whole bunch of parts already, and you know, do it in one weekend type thing. It's going to be fitting it, see what I need. Do I need an oil pan? Do I need relocation thing? Uh, it's going to be. I got to send away the computer to get the some stuff done to it and uh, fuel lines and fuel systems and it's not going to be if anybody said it's a weekend job they're full of shit it's a lot a lot of work it's not just sticking in an engine and turning the key it's uh you know fuel systems the ac system needs to work Every, everything needs to work can't just hook up them three wires and go you know that's the easy part but you, you know to make everything functional and uh, safe you know them fuel says i'm a little bit leery on those uh, high pressure fuel systems so uh i'm gonna have to look into that more anyway i won't want i don't want to ramble too much on that but that'll be coming up after this front suspension guys uh of course the first step is taking everything out that i can possibly use and kind of all in one you know the engine transmission wiring everything you know, I'm sure enough to disconnect some stuff like the AC and all that, but I'm going to try to leave everything connected. I, I need, I'm going to be taking everything out like the motor mounts and the cross member and uh, the drive shaft because I think you got to use the front drive shaft piece for your old drive shaft. And anyway, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a long series on uh, putting that LS in and getting everything to line up and working. So that'll be coming up in a few videos after this front end. And once these belt moldings come on, I'll be uh, 
just incorporating that into into another video uh won't do a separate one you see me wire it all up and you see me make the door panels all i got to do is mount them pretty much and then mount the speaker so i'll just go over that real quick in another video but uh yeah i think that's it so uh subscribe if you haven't like share comment all that stuff and uh we'll see y'all next video thanks everybody for watching